What's going on everybody? So I thought it'd be fun to do another round of these bizarre Old West articles. Now these are all from the 1800s, from actual newspapers, and I come across these as I'm doing research for my other videos, and I save the ones that I think are really interesting or funny or whatever, and I uh, thought I'd share them with you. So we're gonna do another round of these. Hopefully you guys will enjoy them. Let's get started. Now the first one we're gonna do is called Bather Killed by Bear, and this one takes place in Iowa Falls, Iowa. Now it says, in the presence of 50 people last evening, William Lepley, a blacksmith of the city, was killed by a bear that is kept on exhibition at the Palisade boat landing. Lepley was in bathing and swam near the shore where the bear is chained. Before Lepley could make an outcry, the bear reached for him and dragging him out, fastened his teeth in his neck. After a struggle, the body was recovered, but the man died a few moments later. Now it's pretty unclear after reading this why somebody would choose to bathe in a river next to a chained up bear. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that this is probably the only man in the history of Iowa ever to be killed by a bear in the state of Iowa. A lot of questions on this one. I think this one's great. This is just called Woman in Man's Clothes. And so this takes place in Cormorn, Virginia. Not quite sure where that is. So it says that two women were caught breaking into a barn and stealing corn. But what I love is the last line in this article. And it says, quote, when caught, one of the women was dressed in a man's clothes not your mother, it's a man, baby! What is happening in this country? All right, so this one's really bad. Uh, this one is, the title of it is Soldier Shot in Groin. So this one takes place in Cripple Creek, Colorado. So it says, Max Moore of Company H of Boulder was accidentally shot in the groin by one of his fellow soldiers at the Elkton Mine last night. Moore was passing a group of soldiers who were examining their guns when one of them was discharged. You gotta wonder about the odds of that, right? You're walking by a group of soldiers minding your own business. Some of them are like cleaning their guns, fiddling around with it. To have that gun randomly go off and then have that bullet go right through your nutsack, I mean, that's absolutely terrible, man. I, I feel for this guy. This is, this is terrible. This is bad stuff. Nothing funny about that. All right, so this next one's more of a series of interesting articles surrounding getting animals intoxicated. So there's an article here that's titled, A Cow in a Beer Cellar. All right, so this one takes place in Delville, New Jersey, and apparently a cow was lured down into the cellar of a saloon and when down there apparently drank two kegs of beer, which is pretty impressive. The cow got drunk on the beer and then refused to leave the cellar and apparently made quite a raucous knocking things over in the cellar. What I really love about this article, though, is the very end of it, where they're using a quotation by the judge who oversaw the case. So this is what it says. It says, quote, If the cow had drunk whiskey instead of beer, would Shanahan make a complaint? Hardly. What a gold mine a cow with such milk would be to a saloon keeper. A little put in a glass containing cracked ice and sugar would be a wonderful punch. I'm pretty sure that would be Bailey's, actually. Or at least something close to it. Now this one I accidentally cut off the headline of the article and I can't actually find it. So I, I still have the article though and it talks about a dog that a bunch of people in a saloon got intoxicated. And it says that a man named Rodig, who's a shoemaker, owns a dog that is very much of a soak and enjoys his toddy as well as anybody. Yesterday, somebody in the spirit of mischief coaxed the dog to enter a saloon where a glass of beer was given him. The beer disappeared and the canine smacked his chops. He got outside about three beers and in about five minutes was in a high state of hilarity. He could not keep steady on his legs and lurched about like a ship in a storm. All right, now this is my favorite part. It was thought advisable to arrest the animal for drunk and disorderly conduct, but as there is no reference in the statutes as to what disposition could be made with loaded dogs, he was not molested. Now for the third article about guys getting animals completely intoxicated, which apparently is something that we enjoy doing, Clark's Circus, which sounds pretty lame, was in town in Kennett last week. And I don't know where Kennett is and what state they're talking about, but here's why Clark's Circus isn't lame. It's because at this circus, quote, some of the boys got the elephant drunk. Well, continuing with the article, it says the animal went out on a regular tear and made things lively for a while. Now this phrase might sound a little familiar to some of you who watched the last video. In the last video, there's a story of a mountain lion jumping on a guy's head, and the guy describes the mountain lion trying to rip his face off as, quote, things got lively for a while. I gotta say, I love this line, and I'm gonna incorporate it in my own stories moving forward. I suggest you guys do too. I think this one takes place in San Francisco, and it's called A Couple of Strangers Arrested by a Drunken Man. 
So the article says that, quote, a man who was about three sheets in the wind arrested two strangers who were innocently engaged in taking in the city. They asked him for his authority, but he refused to give it, and actually got them as far as the corridor or the courthouse when he fell down and, being unable to get up, was run in himself on the double charge of intoxication and impersonating an officer. But which of us hasn't been there? I also love that the article, though, ends with saying, quote, his charge against the strangers was that they did not vote right in the last election. It's actually kind of funny. This reminds me of a story when I was coming home late one night from work when I lived in downtown Denver, and I go to pull into my driveway, and it looks like there's a trash bag in the middle of my parking spot. And when I get out to move it, there's a homeless man underneath it. So I told him to move, and he said he wouldn't move unless I, quote, get him an effing chili dog. End quote. Suffice it to say, I did not get him a chili dog, and instead we just had it lively for a while. All right, so this next one I love, I think this is in Lincoln, Nebraska, and it's one of these articles where it's just like the local crime stuff that took place. So it says, quote, A German who has been lounging around the jail and making a nuisance of himself for several days was yesterday discovered to be insane and was locked up. He is continually talking to himself in his own language, and the burden of his talk is about some woman and something to eat. He has a voracious appetite, and last night ate the rations of six men, and then called for potatoes. He'll probably be brought before the commissioners of insanity today and sent to Lincoln. Just to be clear, apparently back in the 1800s, you'd be sent to the insane asylum for speaking in your native language and eating a lot of potatoes. All right, next one. Missouri's gay bandits. I got another. All right, so for the last article, it's actually pretty tragic. It's, it's titled, Iowa Man Shoots Seven. This is all accidental though, mind you. But I think it's interesting how it's an Indiana newspaper. I love how they go so far out of their way to make it clear that the guy who accidentally shot the people in the crowd, uh, yeah, he's not from Indiana. He's from Iowa, just to be clear. So it says, Oskaloosa, which is in Iowa, crack shot in trouble at Terre Haute, Indiana. All right, so the article starts by saying, Elmer Mendenhall, the crack shot of the Buckskin Bill Wild West show. Pause. Okay. Right there, if you're going to go to a Wild West show, you probably want to go to Buffalo Bill's Wild West show. Instead, these folks went to Buckskin Bill's Wild West show, and uh, uh, seven of them got shot in the crowd accidentally. You probably should have seen that coming. Now, if you scroll farther down, it says that Mendenhall used a rifle at first in his performance, and then a Winchester repeating shotgun. So if you're wondering how in the world do you accidentally shoot seven people in the crowd, well, you accidentally do that with a shotgun. Now, unfortunately for Mendenhall, apparently the hammer got caught in his cartridge belt, and when he spun around, it fired into the crowd, which is just terrible. And, uh, of course, like I said, hit seven people. The article says that, quote, Mendenhall, whose home is in Oskaloosa, Iowa, is in jail. And rightfully so, right? It wasn't on purpose, but nonetheless, you can't shoot seven people and then just go home. You can't anticipate this stuff happening. Not even at a buckskin bill while West show. Tragic. Tragic. All right, thank you folks for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, if you want me to do more of these, please let me know down in the comments. You have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time. Take care. The roofing next door. <laughs> La Fouche. What a gold mine a cow with such milk would be to a saloon keeper. Alright, so the article starts out by saying Intoxicated, it was lively for a while. Where I was coming home saying, quote, his Before I go, I just want to make sure that I thank my Patreon patrons. So special thank you to Tyler Bioshock Rodriguez, Ashley Gertensen, The Innocents, Hurt and Wade, Man vs. Moose, Bryce V, Cyber, Montgomery Johnson, Jerker Rosen, Chasing Victory, Joshua Bale, Rich Christensen, Comrade Krieger, Dawson E, Zonk Friesis, Noah Ovens, David Perkins, Black Out the Door, Sneaky Ninja, Noah 5943, John Gawley, Jigsaw, Your Pal Mitch, Yinzian, Big Old Bear, Old Hognose, and Joshua Baker. Also, I have to make sure to thank my Silver and Bronze Tier patrons. Thank you all for your ongoing support. Let's keep growing. Let's keep doing what we're doing. Take care, guys.